Hi, good afternoon, and welcome to today's uh, webinar. I am Wendy Wasserman. I'm the Communications Director here at the Appalachian Regional Commission, and I want to thank you for joining us on today's webinar. Um, as you may know, this is one of a series of webinars we've hosted about the Partnership for Opportunity and Workforce and Economic Revitalization Initiative. That's also known as the Power Initiative. You'll hear us referring to that all day today. Um, this, like uh, our other webinars, is being recorded and is online, and we'll talk about some of the other topics that we've covered. But today, we're going to be talking about the technical assistance support available to coal-impacted communities as they prepare their power applications and projects. And to do that, I'm going to be joined by Molly Theobald, who's the director of ARC's Program Operation Division, and Joe Cullen, who is ARC's Senior Policy Advisor. Before we get started, just a few little things to note. Um, we're going to be taking questions at the end of our talk here. Uh, you can submit questions at the top of your screen um, at the Q&A uh, bar at the top of your screen there. Just pull it on down, type on the question, and we'll be collecting those uh, throughout our talk this afternoon. Again, if you are audio only, you can uh, call in at 866-876-6756, and that's uh, passcode 884-7771. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what is the Power Initiative? Um, for those of us who are joining us for the first time, just a quick little refresher. First about uh, the Appalachian Regional Commission. ARC is an economic development agency partnership between the federal government and 13 states focusing on 420 counties across the Appalachian region. ARC's mission is to innovate, partner, and invest to build community capacity and strengthen economic growth in Appalachia to help the region achieve socioeconomic parity. So, in that uh, scheme of things, the Power Initiative is a coordinated federal effort for economic diversification, workforce development, and job creation in coal-impacted communities. It's part of the Obama administration's Power Plus plan that is responding to the changes in the coal economy. ARC is one of the lead agencies for the Power Initiative, and, and our other federal partners include the Economic Development Administration, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the Department of Energy, Department of Labor, and several others. In March, the administration announced that $65.8 million is available for direct support to coal-impacted communities to develop comprehensive projects, leading to long-term economic diversification and sustainability. These funds, which were approved by Congress, are being administered and distributed by the Economic Development Administration and by us, the Appalachian Regional Commission. They include support for implementation and technical assistance. In a previous webinar, which you can find at arc.gov slash power, we talked a bit about the implementation side of the technical of uh, the power initiative. Well, today we're going to be talking about the technical assistance support um, available through power. So, for the power um, initiative, just again a, a quick recap. We have identified four priorities um, as we implement the power initiative across Appalachia. Um, one of them is investing in a competitive workforce, increasing access and application of broadband communications and services, fostering entrepreneurial activity, and growing industry clusters. These are our priorities, as I said, as we mentioned, um, as we implement uh, the Power Initiative in Appalachia, and we're looking for um, community development projects that will fit into one of these four priorities. Through Power, um, the Appalachian region has new resources to develop and implement effective and sustainable projects. Um, the question we hear a lot, though, is how can my community prepare an application to implement a power project? What would that uh, application look like? And can we get help in um, preparing an application that would lead to a successful project? That's one of the reasons we're making this technical support available and have set money aside to do that. Um, its purpose is primarily and to help communities plan and prepare successful projects that will indeed be transformative, regional, collaborative, large-scale, outcome-driven, and accompanied by significant leverage to help coal-impacted communities 
uh, in Appalachia uh, build a better and more sustainable future economy. So with that, um, I am going to turn it over to Molly. Thanks, Wendy. Uh, before I get started, if anyone has any questions about the information Joe and I cover, please just send in a question on the Q&A tab on the uh, screen that you see ahead in front of you. Um, a lot of coal-impacted communities and regions don't have a project ready to go or a strategy ready to be implemented with the power resources. So ARC has made some technical assistance funding available to communities and regions that might need some help in pulling the pieces together to help you formulate your ideas, focus your strategies, or actually write the grant application, the, the power application. So the Power TA funding is available for this kind of work. Um, what the Power TA is not is general technical assistance. It needs to be oriented towards the submission of a power implementation grant. That is the primary goal of this funding, that it prepares your community or your region to submit a power implementation application. So to that end, these uh, TA applications need to be oriented to the priorities that Wendy just covered in the previous slide. So um, a couple of other things about the TA. There's no deadline. The applications will be reviewed on a rolling basis. And um, what was the other thing? Um, there's no defined uh, award amount. Um, when you read the FFO, you'll see that there's no dollar limit. Um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later down the line. But, um, but, but we understand some of these TA applications will be fairly straightforward, like the grant writing application, and some will be more complicated. And so that's why we didn't want to box folks in on the dollar amount. So how do folks get started? First off, read the FFO for the application. It's on the URL sign or the URL link to the arc.gov slash power. That will take you right to the Power TA FFO. It's a fast track, a streamlined way for you to get just grant writing assistance. And that's the grant writing for the power implementation application. The second track is all the other kinds of um, technical assistance that you can use with this uh, TA, mount, TA funding. And Joe will provide a little more detail on that on track two. So for track one, I'll just let you know, um, we've got a checklist available. And when you um, uh, see on this screen, that um, on the right-hand side, if you go to the Power website under resources, you'll see a link to the checklist. And that gives you the detailed information on what you need to complete for both the grant writing effort and the general technical assistance. But for Track 1, which is the grant writing assistance, first you'll need to identify how your region is impacted by, by coal. You'll need to complete an SF424. You'll need to provide budget information and how you're providing match for the project. You'll need to provide information on the consultant that you have selected or if you, or how you, um, if you have not identified a consultant or a grant writer, what your process will be. And once um, uh, you've submitted this project, uh, this application, I, I do want to note that the grant writing assistance is, the, the support is available, will be on a reimbursable basis only. The, the grant writing will be, um, I'm sorry, the TA funding, once you've been awarded it, it will be only on reimbursement of submission of a final power power implementation grant application, and um, and that's it for me. Joe, why don't you provide a little information about Trek Two? 
Uh, great, Molly. Thank you so much. And uh, Wendy uh, gave a nice overview of the power uh, initiative, and um, Molly got us started on track one there with uh, grant writing assistance. Um, so just to make a quick plug here uh, for the website, again, arcgov uh, slash power, uh, on the website, as you'll see on the screen here, uh, we have a checklist uh, that's right on the website, and it will provide you with all the questions you'll be asked as you apply for a technical assistance grant, whether that's just for grant, fund, uh, grant writing funding only, as Molly just discussed, or for all the other types of technical assistance, which I'll talk about now. Uh, but before I talk about that, I just want to make one plug, which is um, if you haven't done so already, you should take out the FFO and take a look at it because, um, first of all, it's pretty short. It's only seven or eight pages. But the uh, overall goals and criteria uh, and purpose of uh, the Power Initiative is outlined in that. In fact, uh, pages seven and eight of the FFO are kind of a recap of um, – the slides that uh, Wendy presented as far as uh, the priorities and criteria, and that's how applications will be judged uh, when they come in. Uh, so that's the first plug. The second is really to take a look at uh, the ARC strategic plan document, which is on the website, and uh, also the main uh, implementation FFO, because um, as um, uh, Molly uh, pointed out, uh, the goal of technical assistance is to submit a full implementation grant application to help communities do that. And so uh, understanding where the road leads through implementation and taking a look at that FFO will help you uh, assess your needs and uh, hopefully assess you define your project. So, uh, so what will technical assistance pay for? Um, I'm going to give you a few examples that are outlined on page four of the FFO. Uh, the list I'm going to read from is non-exclusive, but it's the kind of projects that the ARC uh, has funded in the past, uh, expects to fund under the power initiative, but uh, we are open to other suggestions about your needs. Um, so don't take this as an exclusive list. But having said that, the types of things we anticipate funding are um, technical assistance to build a coalition of local, political, civic, business, religious, and other community leaders. Uh, assembling, interpreting, and analyzing economic and other relevant data, evaluating current economic development and workforce development assets, uh, conducting strategic planning, whether that's a new strategic plan or uh, maybe dusting off and updating uh, a strategic plan that was done several years ago. Uh, it could be for expanding entrepreneurship uh, development and leadership training. Uh, we could fund a, uh, an effort to develop a community or regional economic development strategy. Uh, or it could be for a feasibility study uh, prior to implementation, implementing a particular strategy. And I just want to highlight that all of those types of things could also be folded into a, an implementation plan. Uh, you really need to step back and assess uh, where you are. So we will fund these as a technical assistance grant if it will lead to an implementation uh, grant application, or it is also conceivable that we could fund that as part of an implementation grant program. So if you are um, sort of developing your program and trying to decide whether you are in implementation grant land or technical assistance land, um, I would very strongly encourage you to reach out to your local um, ARC development assistance folks and uh, planning agencies or uh, reach out to folks here in ARC's um, offices. And one way to do that is to submit um, an email at the power at arc.gov uh, website. Um, but that's the kind of uh, topic, uh, whether you're ready for a full implementation grant or whether you want to apply for technical assistance grant, that's the kind of conversation we encourage you to have uh, with our staff. Um, so reach out to us and we're ready to answer those questions. All right, the second thing I want to really uh, focus on and drill down a little bit on is match requirements. So. For those of you who have worked with the ARC before, the map you're looking at is probably familiar to you, so I won't spend a whole lot of time talking about it, but it lays out for you uh, the counties that fall in the ARC region. 
it also highlights for you, and all this information is available at the ARC website, lots of maps, uh, lots of information uh, there. But the color of the counties and their designation will tell you what the match amount is from the ARC. So this is powers a new initiative, but it's administered uh, in sort of the traditional ARC grant uh, system, and so distressed counties, um, there's an 80% reimbursement rate. So um, one uh, thing that we try to emphasize during our workshops on power, and I'll emphasize here, is it's really important to step back and look at your overall, overall project and think of it as uh, sort of the big picture. And then within that, start pulling in, uh, so what are the other resources that we have to bring to the table? So um, one easy thing to think about is if you have a grant or a loan or some other financial support from the private sector or maybe another federal agency, um, you will obviously think about that because that's there and present. But we are also allowing for in-kind uh, resources to be matched for technical assistance and implementation programs. So. If you had, for example, um, dedicated full-time staff from a community college or university near you who's uh, uh, providing some technical assistance to your project, we could, you know, set a dollar amount about what that's worth and use that as in-kind match. Uh, for the ARC1, really kind of new, different, innovative um, aspect of power is the ARC will recognize any federal source of funding, in-kind, cash, or otherwise, as eligible match. Now, that doesn't apply to all federal programs. Um, in fact, it won't apply to any other that I can think of right now, but it does apply to the ARC Power Initiative. So, uh, as you're applying for technical assistance, uh, think about the ARC match, think about the resources you bring to bear, think about the overall scope of your project and where the different pieces lie, and we will consider that. Um, Molly laid out the, you know, kind of the details of the, you need to fill out the uh, budget in your application, and uh, so we'll look for that in your application because they'll all have budgets in them, but we will recognize in-kind or cash match from other sources as potential sources of match. Um, so with that, Wendy, I think I'm done with my subject. Great. Thanks, Joe and Molly. I think this is really helpful. The technical assistance support available through Power is a really unique opportunity uh, for communities to prepare to access these funds to their full ability um, to build sort of a, a stronger economic future um, in Appalachia. That being said, uh, as you may know and as you've heard, this is a big major effort here at ARC, and we're doing a bunch of outreach and educational support systems around it. This webinar is one of many. Um, uh, our fourth in a series of six, as you can see. Um, our previous webinars, what is the power initiative, uh, research and data that's available to understand uh, the implications of a coal-impacted community. In a similar parallel webinar that we did on our implementation grants and the application process around that, as well as this one, will be recorded um, and available online as YouTube videos. Um, and those you can see at arc.gov slash power. We have two other webinars coming up, uh, one in about two weeks' time, which is where to find some of those matching funds that Joe was just talking about. Uh, that's a little bit tricky, but um, lots of opportunity there. And on June 1st, we're going to wrap up uh, our webinar series with a wrap-up of frequently asked questions that we've received about the Power Initiative um, during this time since we announced it in March. That being said, if you do have a question that you want us to address today, be sure to write it down in the Q&A uh, drop-down menu there on the top bar, um, and we have folks collecting them so we can get to it in a few minutes. As part of our outreach, um, we are also have done a series of workshops. Um, Joe mentioned them briefly. Uh, we actually finished three in the region in Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Kentucky, and there are two more coming up, uh, one also in about two weeks' time in West Virginia, and another one at the end of the month in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. These are free workshops. They're day-long workshops where you can meet ARC's power team um, and some of our federal partners, learn more about the initiative, figure out um, what is appropriate for your community and how to engage. Um, and you can uh, register for those workshops, again, at arc.gov power. 
So with that, just a final plug. Uh, if you want to know, we've developed that website there as a one-stop shop, um, and we also have an email available, power at arc.gov, which is a great way for you to reach our power team with any questions that you have that you may have thought about, you know, in 10 minutes' time or 10 days' time. Um, we're here to help you. We can also, as Joe mentioned, on the technical assistance side, help you figure out if you are – um, right on track for technical assistance, track one or track two, or if you're ready for an implementation or, or how to start thinking about things. So our folks are eager and anxious to help you with those questions. So um, now that we're finished with that uh, part of the discussion, we have had some questions that have come in um, that I wanted to chat with Molly and Joe about because they are the folks who know. And the first one about technical assistance that came in is really just to sort of re-look at, again, if you could remind us how the reimbursement cycle works for, tower, for power technical assistance and how the applications are reviewed and the awards made and all that kind of stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, sure, sure, Wendy. Um, in regards to the grant writing applications, once a community has been notified by ARC that their application has been approved, uh, that community will be assigned an ARC project coordinator. And that coordinator will work with the grantee and provide detailed instructions on what information needs to be tracked and provided to ARC in order to get a reimbursement. Um, and that is a reimbursement available once the power implementation application is submitted. So uh, you're going to have to work with your consultant or your grant writer you know, work with their timeline and um, and make sure you can work out your arrangements with them so uh, we are not pre-approving or we're not pre-funding that grant writer that's only going to be reimbursed, that funding will be reimbursed once that application to power has been submitted online. So, Molly, just to make sure I understand what you said, so for the, that track one, that fast track grant writing, um, the reimbursements, even though you might have gotten approved for technical assistance, the reimbursements are not issued until the full implementation application is made as those uh, grant writing support is supposed to help you prepare for that grant implementation. That's correct. And, Joe, is that the same with track two, with all those other technical assistance support things that are available under track two? Uh, no, track two would be a little different. It's, um, uh, for example, if you uh, applied for and receive uh, funding for a feasibility study um, and uh, your community or region determined that um, the idea wasn't feasible, uh, we wouldn't require you to submit a full implementation application based on a study that said, you know, the idea is not feasible. So, um, so for the other pieces of uh, technical assistance, we – uh, the intent is to fund uh, projects and uh, initiatives that lead to a full implementation grant, but uh, people, uh, you know, we're not expecting people to predict what the results of those studies will be. Um, and as Molly pointed out, once the technical assistance project and the application is submitted, and once that process starts, you'll have a full-time, um, you'll have contact with a, a person at ARC who's going to be the project manager and that that would be that would be the kind of thing that you would you know talk to them about what the reimbursement rate or what the reimbursement is and what the schedule is and what the outcomes that are you know listed under the grant and that sort of thing so um, uh, but no the flat the flat out answer is it won't require you to submit an application we hope it does but we can't predict what the studies would fund so that seems to me another good reason that if you are considering technical assistance support or applying for technical assistance support for power and, and you're not really sure where your community fits in, just to reach out to the ARC power team or if you're within the West Virginia or Alabama uh, regions in the next few weeks to join us at one of those workshops. And that is an opportunity for you to sort of suss out where you are and make sure that you're on track with the applications that you want to make. Okay. 
So there is uh, a couple questions that have come in about the amount of money that uh, these applications should be made for. I mean, I know that $1.2 million we talked about is available for technical assistance. But when people are making these applications and are applying for this technical assistance funding, how much should they be asking for? Is there a range or a dollar limit? Or, you know, the FFA, FFO says a modest amount of funding. What does that mean? Well, um, I would not recommend a $1.2 million TA application. So um, I'll say that much. <laughs> um, we um, did not put a deadline in because we know that there's a range of the type of technical assistance, a broad spectrum of assistance that's required to successfully accomplish what the power TA effort is supposed to be doing. Um, some projects are going to be very straightforward. Some TA assistance, will, like grant writing, will be very straightforward, not as, as uh, financially expensive. Others will be very complicated. So the complexity of the project will really dictate the project cost. Um, in the past, ARC has done a lot of technical assistance work. Uh, so we have a reasonable idea of what a TA project could cost in, in the Appalachian region. Um, in the past, we've done grant writing efforts that were target that were limited to five or ten thousand um, dollars, and that's a good starting point. But we know that some grant, some power TA applications are very complicated projects with large regions and lots of players. So we don't want to set a, a specific number on any of these the kind of assistance that's going to be required. So, again, another reason why folks should really evaluate what they need and um, make applications based on their need and assess their need carefully. Right. Okay. Another question is coming in about match and match requirements specifically for technical assistance. Um, uh, Joe, did you mention that other federal funds can be used for technical assistance, and is there any um, qualification of what those federal funds can or cannot be? Uh, sure, Wendy. Uh, well, as part of the power initiative, um, the ARC has put $1.2 million into the FFO to provide this technical assistance, which is specifically designed to get people uh, in a position where they can make a full implementation application under power. Now, other federal agencies, uh, like our partner agency, um, the Economic Development Administration, they have some technical assistance available for their regular programs, um, but uh, nothing specifically designated for power. So uh, you should explore those with EDA. That's a national program. That's not just limited uh, to the ARC region. So that's a, kind of a different, you know, category of technical assistance. But, um, but one of the things, and we talked about it earlier, but I just want to emphasize that um, for any applicant who's already working with another federal agency, uh, their uh, technical assistance contribution or their uh, grant or uh, other funding that they've already provided, the ARC will look to that for either an implementation grant or a technical assistance grant as potential match. So um, just one thing to keep in mind, it's unusual in the federal system, system for one federal entity to, to take uh, another federal entity's um, funding as match, but that's what we're doing under power. So. Great. And just to remind folks, we have a webinar coming up, and um, we talked about it briefly, in about two weeks' time, specifically on MATCH. And that will be a time where we'll discuss sort of the more technical issues of MATCH and how counties can calculate MATCH, and especially uh, projects that are thinking about being multi-county or regional. So we'll get into that there. Um, and, again, that's on May 18th. Um, and you can learn more about that at arc.gov slash power. Uh, we have time for a few more questions. If you have any questions, you can write them down in the Q&A drop-down uh, box on the menu up there on the top of uh, the toolbar. So there was a question that came in um, that we had flashed up a, match, uh, a map about distressed counties, but we talked about coal-impacted communities. So what's the difference? Why? The, the, where do those two things play in? Well, um, coal impacted communities are not the same as ARC designated economically distressed um, counties. Uh, the coal impact community is really a core element of the power initiative, whereas the distressed 
the, the economic status of a county really dictates um, what the match of a project needs to be. So if you need information, more information about the impact, the coal impact of your community, um, there was a previous webinar um, on that very subject, and you can listen to it on the ARC Power Portal that Wendy showed earlier. Um, and if you need information about the county designation uh, or the, the economic designation of your county, you can find that on ARC.gov. But for instance, you know, pa uh, Pennsylvania has a lot of communities that are coal impacted, but they don't have any distressed counties as designated by ARC. So, so they are different, and um, folks need to do a little uh, work on uh, determining how they fit in both issues, both areas. So again, you know, it seems to me that what you're saying, Molly, is that while coal impacted is a core requirement for both power uh, technical assistance and implementation grants, that's a core requirement. That's something that communities need to figure out. That webinar is a good place to start. The power webpage is a good place to start. The distressed county maps, that's really for discerning match. Um, and so it's not one and the same. There are actually two different streams of information that you need to pay attention to as you are thinking about these applications. Um, and again, we'll be talking about match in about two weeks. But that's where that distressed county map becomes super important. That's right. OK. Um, I think uh, we had one other question that came in. Um, is if there is a website where we can find a map or a list of coal impacted communities. Again, those resources are available at arc.gov slash power. There is no one size fits all magic definition uh, already, you know, blessed by all the people that defines what a coal impacted community is. That just doesn't exist. And the reason why is because every community is different. And coal impact, it could be the closure of a mine. It could be the closure of a power plant. It could be uh, an impact of something along the supply chain, like uh, a train station or um, some kind of other logistic support, the manufacturers of the bulldozers and the machinery that's worked on a mine. So it's really up to a community to determine the best way using the data that's available, the economic analysis data that's available to them, to make that case that they are coal impacted. Again, the webinar that we offered and the resources that we have on arc.gov slash power can point you in those directions, but you can uh, submit and offer evidence that's coming from your own um, county economic services or, or other resources that make that case. Just because we don't know about it doesn't mean that it's not a valid way to justify coal impacted. So, you know, we work very closely with LDDs and um, We've got a question uh, about um, if grant writing and uh, LDDs can, or other partners that we work with um, through ARC can submit for technical assistance for grant writing. My understanding is that the answer uh, is no, is that there's folks that um, all right, cannot, you know, it's not that we're not saying communities can't uh, apply for that power technical assistance funding, but this is really for communities who are coming into the power application uh, system in a different way, and we suggest that we work with uh, your LDDs closely to be able to get the support that you need. Okay. Um, yeah, I would, Wendy, I'd like to say um, we work very closely with the LDD communities, and um, I know they provide a lot of grant writing assistance to communities for regular ARC projects. So I would suggest if an LDD is interested in submitting an application for grant writing assistance to contact ARC in advance directly, independent of the power application process, and we'll assess whether that's a, a good fit. Um, uh, that's probably the best way for an LDD to to work this out together. And another good point, because that just sort of underscores that these TA uh, support, it, it, as you're trying to figure it out, it's just really important to get in touch with the ARC power team to ma make sure that we're giving you the support that you need and you're asking for the support that you need that's appropriate to your community. OK. So the last question that we got in um, is actually about the track one, the grant writing uh, fast track um, grant that you talked about, the technical assistance support that you talked about, Molly. And they asked if track one can be applied for any other items in the budget other than the cost of a consultant or a grant writer. Um, gosh. 
I right now I'm saying no just because I can't think of what that might be. Um, I would send a question so that what specifically they're thinking about to the powerta.gov web um, question, uh, what is that? The so sending a question to power at arc.gov, the slide that's right there um, on, on the screen for you. But again, underscoring once more, I think we've now said this about six times, <laughs> is that if you have any questions about the technical assistance uh, support that's available and the nuances that apply to your community and the questions that you're asking to get in touch with the power team or, again, if you're in West Virginia or Alabama, um, to engage with us at those community workshops. Either way, we are here. We're available. Um, our whole team is trying to figure this out and make it work for you. Right, and and that answer might change once we we know more information about the specifics of the question. But perfect, there you go. Okay, well, I think that's going to wrap it up for us today. I hope this was really helpful for you. Again, um, everything that uh, we have, we've developed a one-stop shop at arc.gov/power um, for basic resources about the power initiative, both on the technical assistance side that we talked about today, on the implementation side, background resources. Um, all sorts of stuff that you need, frequently asked questions, checklists, everything that you need to get you going is there. Um, we'll be back in about two weeks on a webinar about Match. Um, and I wanted to thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Special thanks to Molly and Joe. And um, we'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.